see a man from heaven Come and see Hear him speak He has seen the face of God Come and see Here we are, Cindy and Denise of Seeds Fine Art Exhibits, and we're launching into a whole new direction uh, in sense of how we're going to present art. Um, it's the same concept we've had for almost 20 years. Yes. For almost, almost 20 years old. But this time, we're bringing the artwork to you. Yeah. So today, uh, we have with us Juan Estrada and Dion Zender. And we're going to be interviewing them and talking about their artwork and their collaboration together. So instead <laughs> of having a gallery that you go to, we're bringing the artwork to you and allowing the artists to really tell their story mm -hmm. and look closely at the artwork and hear the things that really matter about the matters of the heart and their artwork. <laughs> Well, I am uh, Juan Daniel Estrada, um, also known as Zender, or formerly known as Zender, kind of like Prince. <laughs> and, uh, like formally. Yeah, yeah. formally. Um, I'm more, probably more known as a muralist and a community public artist, but I do, I do do a lot of art on easel and fine art for myself, and that's kind of what got me connected with Seeds, because one of the uh, special components of seeds is that you focus on spirituality and art and ministry mm -hmm. and spiritually based art which I have been doing probably for the last 25 years I started mm -hmm. with public art and Chicano art cultural art mm -hmm. and through the many trials of life you come to meet and have a great relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and that open the door for contemplating what art and spiritual uh, spirituality is all about, which is a little different from Kandinsky <laughs> and a little bit different from Michelangelo and the Renaissance because uh, those were all commissioned by the churches, except for Kandinsky. But a lot of the you know churches and involved here is not about church. To me, it's more about we are the church and the, mm -hmm. and the paintings can become the, the um, interpretation of how artists can interpret their experience or their relationship with, with God. Dion, what's it like being an artist with your dad as an artist and finding your own path? Well, the reason why I actually chose myself into becoming an artist is that what I, what I learned now, what I learned from my, fa from my father is that be being an artist is what makes me a bit special. Just like these these type of paintings, for example, I used to fall in love with all the coastal fishes that are around the coast of California, and I used to analyze through all the fishes from A from A to Z for all the for all the coastal fishes in California, and that's what got me started on just painting painting these type of fishes, like uh, like rock fishes, sea lions, sardines, tunas. <laughs> usual kind of stuff mm -hmm. and the next thing I'm next thing I know is that I'm sort of like raising raising my levels into into my art skills by by doing a couple of watercolors mm -hmm. and acrylic and acrylics based on based on these traditional fishes like like these for example mm -hmm. you're beautiful thanks Tell us about the collaboration that you've done on this painting. What is it called, and when did you do it, and who did what? All right, let me start. Um, basically, the collaboration concept came in when we were 
in our backyard and I told him, Dan, we need to paint these murals and I need your help. And he's like, I only paint pictures. And I'm like, I know that, but we still got to finish this mural. So he, he, I said, is there any way you can paint something else? And he's like, like what? And I'm like, a bird, remember? I said, a bird. He goes, oh yeah, I got a lot of it. So he actually, the first collaboration we ever did, he painted a hawk or an eagle head. Mm. Mm-hmm. And I did my abstract portraiture next to it, and that kind of w- was really cool. But he, you could see that it was like not his forte. He was like, I'm not really into birds. I'm a fish guy. <laughs> so uh, a friend of mine called me, and this is before we did this one. And he said, hey, we have a wall that we would love for you to come and paint. And I said, well, I would love to, but is it possible to do a collaboration with my son? And they're like, yeah, sure, bring him. So we came, and I said, Dion, we're going to... We're gonna have to paint this collab. So here's the easiest way to do it. You paint the fish, I do the background. <laughs> and he's like, great. So we didn't even have that much time to 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 sort of prepare for it. Mm-hmm. We just got to the the wall. I said, what are you painting? And and he wanted something kind of like he did an eel at the at the wall. It's still there. Mm-hmm. It's in downtown LA in the Arts District in okay. a uh, coffee cool. shop. It's basically an eel. Mm-hmm. with with like these beautiful colors coming out of it and they loved it i mean they oh, loved great. the way the eel came out with the mouth open and the the beautiful bright colors and and that was the the idea behind it so mm-hmm. after that we did a piece called stop the trash which has a whale yeah, with graffiti yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. um and that was a Love little that. bit different because we were trying to i we were talking about the idea of uh of the message and that was stop the trash and he wanted to do something for environmental um so we did that and and uh we also got the inspiration for it for the for the way with the graffiti by that movie uh shark tale like the ones the like the how the most of the sperm whales have like those graffiti on top and they have to wash it off at mm-hmm. the at the whale wash. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. that's a funny idea. Yeah. yeah. So so this one we said, uh, hey, how about if we do one on canvas? That was a that was a small one. Mm-hmm. I said let's do one on canvas because we we would love for one day maybe to have a two two person show. We got to have some work. So this is the, the, the first canvas piece we did. Um, mm. The other one was a small little piece, it's a big one, and this is called Magenta Drift. And we were talking about how, because we did the eel, we chose a lot of kind of candy colors and it's really colorful. So I said, let's kind of keep it more on that on that level. And so he, he, he chose the uh, purple uh, jellyfish of how the colors for that jellyfish stands out from the rest of the pit versus the sea creatures in the ocean. Mm. Kind of like a more of a fluorescent type of jellyfish that glows in the dark. Mm. Oh, it's mm. beautiful. Yeah. So I kind of went followed his lead. Mm-hmm. And uh, but one of the as interesting far as the color yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we ended up having a two person show at the uh, Palmdale Playhouse. Uh, called it was called Inheritance, which was a father and son and oh, he nice. had a lot more pieces there and that was a pretty good show. And recently, most recently, um, we done two more collaborations. Recently, mm-hmm. with a with now more of my current style, mm-hmm. uh, and those I think because I'm now painting in my true voice. I I believe they came out way more, you know, a lot more beautiful in my sense because the uh, mm-hmm. the images are a lot more organic, and they go. I think they go a lot more with it because he added a lot more fishes, a lot more fishes. Juan, would you tell us about the um, painting Whisper in the Dark? It's such a great story. You have to share. Okay. Um, this painting, along with this painting, is from a series that I call Triunity. It's the ver- It's actually the second batch of paintings. I started with 8 by 10s um, The whole point of the paintings uh, is a fusion between the soul, which in my interpretation is who you really are, your your background, your, your how you were raised, your beliefs, your culture, whether you're Irish or if you're Japanese or Latino like me, that's your soul because it makes up your, the uniqueness of who you are. And I'm also fusing the biology of the physical nature of where we live. We're a soul inside of a physical, tangible body. Mm-hmm. And the spirit and the spirit component obviously is your your relationship with God or your interpretation of how you you're trying to seek spirituality. So these this series is triunity to fuse a balance. 
between all three. And that's where these, um, this whole series comes from. There was a time when um, I had a hospitalization myself. I had a ruptured appendix that was infected and mm -hmm. they did what was supposed to be a simple procedure ended up going really wrong. So I ended up having a blood clot inside of my abdomen that wouldn't stop from bleeding. So the doctor said, you're pretty much have an infection that's going to spread up to your body and you're going to die. And I was like, what? So the doctor kind of told me, you got, you know, antibiotics, if they don't work, you're dead. Blah, blah. So of course I seeked into the refuge of my spiritual comfort and prayed to God and said, if, you know, you got to help me and you fight it, you fight it, you fight it. But we oftentimes get to a point where we're looking or, or wanting some kind of comfort. And that's where this painting comes in because even for myself during that traumatic experience of someone, especially like a doctor saying, you're, you know, your, your chances of living or dying are in it up to God. So it took me a while, but finally I, I decided to let go and let God and say, God, if this is be your will, um, I'm ready to go. And miraculously after I surrendered, uh, the infection went away and I'm healed. So that is a testimony there, but this painting has to do with that comfort voice that we want to hear because in this case I used the nurse and that's why it's called the whisper in the dark and I use the concept of the title whisper in the dark because like I said when you're in hospitals hospital uh, scenario most of the time you're you're in darkness as to your condition you're in the darkness of what your outcome is going to be you're in darkness about um your even maybe your eyes are covered or or it's a dark room or so the the concept of darkness is just not knowing and so a, a whisper is the nurse who comes in and kind of gives you that encouragement how are you doing today mr or mrs this and today we're going to be a great you're doing great and they constantly keep doing that you're doing great everything's going to be fine and i feel that that that's the way you know, interpreting it in a spiritual level, to me, that's the way even the Holy Spirit can be in our lives. It tells us we're going to be fine. You know, this is something you trial or tribulation. And with the painting, as you can see, I used the concept of the headdress, combining it with the abstraction. In in during some of the wars, where I was reading the article about war, a lot of the nurses had the headdress where it was like a white kind of, you guys see the movie of the the flying nun where she kind of, <laughs> you know, has those things. And, and so the nurses um, typically have a hat, you know, with a cross on it. So that's where the hat here. Throughout my, my years of painting, I've been painting for such a long time that I created my own language uh, with paint and, and iconography and symbols. So you're going to see these blades or knives repeat it in many paintings and I have two types of blades as you can see in in Moses up there he has the blades there too and I have uh, spikes that kind of are more about sin and things that we do in our lives that cause us pain versus these these are more like blades or daggers that are cause for a sort of like a scalpel it's like God uses scalpel in the same way that a surgeon uses scalpel to remove something, whether it's sin, whether it's unbelief, whether it's uh, unforgiveness, and he, it's it's painful to get that cut out of us. But once it's cut mm -hmm. out, it releases you from that pain or releases you from that tribulation. Mm -hmm. So these spikes our trials and tribulations that we use them. Sometimes I'll put them on the heads, which means a crown. You wear a crown of victory over those things that had you, you know, in mm. pain. Mm. Um, we have these columns that I that I, I call they're like vibrational columns that in the eyes and in the mouth. As you can see, Moses is, is uh, speaking differently from the nurse. He's the, the the usually in the newer paintings I use the the wavelengths. Uh, vocal cords to to symbolize how they speak whether it's a soft spoken word whether it's a harsh word vocal points vibrations that we don't mm. see but are there and that's the science component of my work i love to include science biology uh morphology of the concept of something changing something transforming so here in her vocals they're little 
kind of like air bubbles that are soothing versus harsh vocals. You're gonna die. You're not doing so good. <laughs> no, her 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 is like almost right in your ear and going, it's gonna be fine. You're gonna be okay. And that allows your spirit to sort of glow, you know? And then here, this all the color around it is it's kind of like a happy color. <laughs> My newer works are a lot more monochromatic and they're warms, you know. But mm -hmm. this one, I, you know, I chose a color scheme, a lot of green, because green is prosperity. Green is growth, flowers, mm -hmm. trees. That's why, you know, I always feel they need more plants in hospitals. They're all yellow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and in her case, she is like a living tree, all the greenery. Mm -hmm. And of course, I include the molecular structure of her being, the uh, the whole dynamic of we're all created in a in God created us in His image, where we're we're precisely made. So I mm -hmm. include the 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 elements of of little vibrations versus you know auras and little molecular structures, and of course, um, the medium. This one's an oil on canvas with oil stick on top, and. Um, this is from 20, 20, 2018, so it's one of the earlier pieces. Mm -hmm. So, Dion, would you tell us about the uh, whale with the graffiti on it? This, this particular whale with the graffiti is sort of like a collaboration between me, me and my dad, where, uh, where, I, did the, where I did the whale on... Uh, sort of like on, on cat on acrylic while the while my dad actually done uh, the pr particular graffiti that says stop the trash and this particular artwork was actually being fe featured as a uh, as second as second place as being the the best artwork that they've ever seen in uh, in in the aquarium of the aquarium of the pacific what do you think of it tom um, like I said, I, I like the idea because when we, we were talking about the concept of what's the purpose of it, mm -hmm. uh, we were hoping that it was going to be turned into a poster and then we would be out there sharing it, uh, campaigning to bring awareness again to the pollution. And I kept telling my son, son, you know, now it's time that you're now getting more established as a painter to go back with that concept of, yeah. of bringing awareness yeah, about is. the environment and finding a nonprofit that we can either, you know, share some pro proceeds to, to the nonprofit mm -hmm. or it's just donate our time and bring bring more of these type of posters out. Dion, can you please uh, tell us what type of fish that is? And uh, tell us how you painted it and what, what's your inspiration? This, this particular fish right here is a, uh, it's a different types of species, which is called a, uh, a chili pepper rockfish. And these are one of the more unique type of unique type of rockfishes, where it has like more vi vibrant colors of, which is far different from from those uh, blue or bluish or greenish fishes that you might see on under underwater throughout the throughout the coast of California. And and for this type of painting techniques, I've actually done a lot more research on different colors for for different types of fish fishes to complement within the within the the background background of the painting so that is a what did you call it chili pepper rockfish, rockfish. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it does look a little spicy <laughs> <laughs> So thank you all. Thank you for um, laughing along with us and being a part we'll of God's time. Miracles. Yeah. Yep.
Yeah. 